everyone, here's a quick video on how to set up a Nitro Governor with V-Bar. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you initially how to check your Governor sensor. For this model here I'm using, I'm using a backplate sensor um, on the bottom of the engine here. Uh, the same process applies if you're using a magnet on the fan shroud or any other uh, Governor method. Um, then the V-Bar, got to be connected and you want to go to model status. And once you're in there, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and you're gonna have your RPM signal here and there's a box and that's very similar for the classic as well. Um, I think it's a checkbox, but same concept. And you can get something for your engine. So you can turn it over manually and it'll turn green when the sensor is not active and it'll turn gray when it detects the back of the engine. All right, next part of the setup is you wanna get your carburetor servo arm 90 degrees. So the goal is to get, you see there's a dot over here for the carb fully closed, a dot over here, for the carb fully open, and then there's three dots here in the middle. You want your servo arm on the carb to be 90 degrees when you're on that middle dot. You can see here, right there, I'm lined up with it. I've already set up this engine, but if yours is not 90 and it probably is not out of the box, you can get a driver and go in this hole on the carb. There's a little hole back there um, to keep it in one spot so you're not tearing up the carb, trying to hold it somewhere else and uh, loosen this screw and tighten it down really good with Loctite until you are 90 and on that middle dot. All right, next part of the setup, after you've set up your uh, carb or your servo horn on the carb to be 90 degrees, we need to set up your throttle servo to also be 90 degrees, or as close to 90 as possible. Um, I'll show you how you can mess this up and do it wrong or at least uh, something I ran into when I was trying to do this, but I didn't notice in any videos So it might be the way that I have my throttle cut set up as the same switch as safety for my electric models um, Regardless, it's something to check to make sure you don't overextend your servo So if you go into edit model setup where you set this You'll have v-bar nitro governor and your gear ratio and then put your pole pairs in here 99% of the rpm sensors on the market use uh, one pole pair, two poles, um, backplate, and a magnet on the uh, fan shroud. Um, I guess if you put the fan shroud magnets on wrong, you could use the two pole, but that's still the incorrect option to do. And more data, it has to read each rotation. So just do it right. Um, how they've described it in other videos to set up your RPM sensor. Uh, it should be one pole pair, two poles, but double check to make sure that the one you're running um, it's set up like that. So you'll see on the throttle servo here, I've got throttle cut. We go into this menu, set up for the option three, which is this switch up here, which is the same switch I use on my electrics uh, as lockout. I'm not sure if that's why this bug occurs, but wanted to show it to you at least. Um, you aren't able to turn on collective control with your cut on. You'll see the servo is not moving when I'm doing this, um, which is a problem. But when you turn it on to set up your endpoints, there's an offset on the lower end, which you don't want. So how do we get rid of this offset? Go into governor, nitro idle, turn that to zero. We'll go back to our setup, all the way at the bottom, collective control again. You'll see when I turn on and off the cut, there is no movement of the servo. That is what we want. So from here, um, you want to have collector control on, put your serve, have your cut off, so the servo can move. You want to put your stick to exactly mid stick. I'm going to take off the servo horn I was using for movement. Um, once you have it, at mid stick, endpoints should be at 100 and 100. 
I'm gonna put the servo horn on 90 degrees. This is as close as I can get with mine. I'm using a Theta THM988, which is a non-programmable servo. The programmable version I'm using on the Cyclix. Um, so if I was using the Sabre C1, I would be able to program it and have it perfectly center. Um, it's not a huge deal with the throttle servo to be not perfectly 90. What's important is when you're 90 um, to be on that third or the middle mark of your carb. So that's the notch there. I'll look at the one on the other side to look. We are way off there, as you can see. So I'm gonna go with the first option I had. So it's very close. We will set that up later in the video to get it perfectly on that middle notch. Um, but you can see this horn isn't perfectly 90 anymore. Um, but the important part is if it is perfectly 90, it's on that center mark. So we set it up correct previously. Um, all right, so our horn is 90 technically. Um, we go over to our endpoints on the radio. And you want to put for stop, put your stick all the way at the bottom. And you want your servo endpoint to be, have that notch line up with the notch all the way on this side of the carb. And this is for an OS 55, so I'm not sure if other carbs are different, but um, when you're setting this up, you probably want to check and make sure that it is actually closing the carb over here. Um, I know some engines could be the opposite, and if that's the case, you can just reverse the endpoints in your radio um, for what's full and what's stop. And for full, you're gonna go all the way open, and you have that same notch line up with, oh, where are we? The other notch on your carb. So this is pretty difficult to do the way that my camera and radio are set up. So I'm gonna pull the radio over here out of view to set this. So we can see our stop needs a little bit more. There we go. So it's overextending the servo there. Pull it back a little bit. I'm at 112, my endpoints. And all the way open. Right about there. And about 102. <laughs> So that offset, ideally you want both these numbers to be the same. Um, that middle ground there is because the servo isn't perfectly 90. Um, but that's just something I'm gonna have to live with here unless you have a programmable servo you can use. All right, after we've set up our endpoints, we are done with that menu. We can go into the governor menu to set our stuff up. Um, I set it up at the very bottom so that direct throttle is bank one. So if I have it in bank one, it goes fully open, fully closed. I think special throttle curves, bank one. Um, it looks the same as the other ones, but the governor is overriding it to be direct there. So 0 to 100, I use it for spooling up. Once I get to about mid-stick, I'll crank it into bank 2 or 3. So that's one thing to do initially. Um, our head speeds, bank 1 is direct throttle, so it does not matter what you put there. I don't think, I don't think it's going to govern it to 1600. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't. I'm gonna cut that up just a little bit, just in case. I highly doubt it will. Uh, bank two and three, I set my head speeds based on the power band of the engine. This is an OS55, so the power band is between 17 and 20,000 RPM. Um, I think bank two is around 17,000 divided by my gear ratio, so about 2060. And then to have a little bit of overhead, when you're for a little bit of a 
wiggle room in the power band. I think that bank three I have set up so that 18,000 RPM divided by 8.6 is around 2150, 2200, um, just somewhere in the power band so that if the motor falls off a little bit under high load, it can recover. Um, I do fly in bank two for the most part, but bank three is nice to have here and there. Nitro idle, you'll see if you're looking at the carb here, it's all the way shut. If we increase it, sorry, need to have it all the way down. Uh, throttle all the way down. So nitro idle. Right now, when I move motor on and off, doesn't move much. So this is where you want your idle to be. This is something you'll have to test at the field probably when you first start the engine. Um, I'm going to leave it at 20. You can see that looks realistic based on the offline there. Um, if you turn the engine off, it goes to full off there. Kill switch. All right, collective add. I'll get back to that here in a second. But basic throttle, um, this is something that's important to set. Uh, so if your engine's on, go to bank two. Bank two. You'll see my carb over here is opening. And it's going to overextend from those three marks because it's looking for 2060 RPM and it's reading zero. So the loop's ramping up. Um, I'm gonna get a different thing to put you all on here. All right, so if we are in a bank trying to read a RPM and go to mid stick, you should be at the middle of those three lines. If you set this up correct up to this point, or remotely close. You can see that I'm just a hair over that. So I'm gonna change basic throttle down to 48. Which lowered it just a little bit, and now we are right on that line. I'll do that for all my banks, because it'll be the same. Um, all right, so collective add here. What does that do? You'll see if I open my carb all the way, it's not getting all the way to that full mark that we set in our endpoint because essentially it's only giving you, um, I guess if we double these values, it goes, it's only giving you 60% of what's available. So if we were to crank this up, about 50 it'll be at that line at the end point you can see it matches up there now um breaking in a motor i usually leave this at 30 so it's not opening it wide open but once i've got it broken in i put this to 50 so that i get the full full range of movement of the carb Let's see here, what else do we have? Uh, I don't really touch cyclic add or collective dynamic. I guess you can. Um, min throttle is the lowest on the curve of uh, the governor that it will go if you're over speeding. So we set our basic throttle to 48. Essentially imagine that being 40. That's the lowest the car's ever gonna go if you over rev the engine. And AR idle is if you go into the idle without the engine off. That's the percent it's going to be at. So you can see it's moving there. I'll just leave that stock. Um, engine, off. engine off doesn't fully kill the engine here. You can see on the car, it's still got a little bit of room to close, and that's where your cut switch kicks in. Let's see, it's opening. All the way, not reading RPM, so it's overextending. Each side it's opening the car, and in the middle it's going back to that basic throttle valve when there's no pitch. Um, that's essentially all there is for setting up a nitro governor. Bye.